So this is Windows 10 uh, on the MT7010. I installed Boco Screen to record this. MT7010 is Windows 10 Pro. So let me close this out. Now I'm not online. I hadn't even plugged in the USB yet or the Wi-Fi connection. And as soon as I do, Windows is going to just try to tap into Microsoft and start doing their thing. So what I've done, uh, right here, this is what I downloaded off of that, this site that I'll show you, their web page, and then I unzipped it, and it's right here. So this is the Q4OS Windows setup, and it will not start as long as I'm offline. So as soon as I plug in that Wi-Fi dongle, you can watch this device right here. It's going to change saying that it's connected. And as well, as soon as it does that, it's going to try to connect, call home. <laughs> so, here's my little Wi-Fi dongle. Plug that in. And I guess you may have heard that. As soon as that changes and says we're online. Actually, it should ask me where to connect. Yep. I think that's the right one. Not the right one. What an ordeal just to get online. There we go. So I'm gonna immediately click this and give it permission. Close out of that. And now we're gonna see the Q4 OS installer pop up. Actually it's competing with Windows right now. <laughs> okay, so just like on their web page, you you can have some of these you can change. And one is the installation size. Uh, let's go ahead and give this 64 gigs. This is Q4 OS Gemini, language English US. Username, I'm going to change that to Q4 OS. And I'm going to give it a password. Confirm the password. Uh, right here. Let's see. Language, installation drive, size. Accessibility. Here you can add uh, some visual aids. I'm going to say none. All right. Let's go. Let's install. And again, it's going to be competing with Windows. <laughs> I might add, this is the very first time Windows has been online. So if I was to bring up settings right now, you would see that it's connecting. <laughs> E.T. Phone home. E.M.S. Going to phone home. <laughs> so I put on my Braves t-shirt because I I feel like I'm being brave here running Windows. <laughs> but I'm going to have to, once this is finished, I'll reboot. And I'll reboot in the Q4 OS. And obviously I won't be able to record that until after I get on Q4 OS desktop or Plasma. And I, then I can install simple screen recorder or even voco screen maybe and then i'll record that section and then i'll come back to windows and get rid of q4 os and then go show that it's not going to boot and it wipes out q4 os and i'll probably have to take some pictures with my camera in between Remaining time, approximately 3 minutes and 40 seconds, and I guarantee you the internet's blowing up right now with Windows. 3 minutes and 59 seconds, it was said less than that just a second ago, a minute ago. <laughs> well, it's competing with Windows right now over the internet. You can see the little light flashing away on the thumb drive. Wi-Fi dongle. The audio's gonna suck. I had my plastic bag over the microphone. <laughs> Maybe it won't be too bad. Now, I might add, if you was doing this on an updated, fully updated Windows machine, it would 
Alright, so it's through downloading Q4OS. I could probably go back offline right now. Uh, open up folder. Yep, it's loaded. It's, it's recording again now. Minimize that. And again, I'm going to have to stop it when I go to reboot. As soon as this gets through extracting. It's downloaded everything. Like I said, I could probably unplug the Wi-Fi. Let me go do it here performance-wise. Okay, I'm under performance tab. Show it to me. Pyrun.exe is what this program is running. So we're running about half the processor and about five gigs of RAM. Close that back out. Yeah, the ending of that part one may be messed up because I don't know exactly when it stopped recording. But I'll make sure that it, this part gets in there explaining why. <laughs> and it does not like this camera. Look at all that fuss. And with Voco screen, there's very limited configuring the size, the shape, and that's about it. All right, come on, you can do it. Actually, I'm going to pause the video. There's a pause button. Let me pause it. Actually, I think I can do this. Let me go to Device Manager. Because I got to do that when I do need to reboot. It's going to say, updates, uh, install and updates do not read and turn off your machine. And I end up waiting an hour for that. Come on, Device Manager. Part of this is it's on a hard drive. So I'm going to reboot now. And we're going to boot into Q4OS. We actually should get the option to boot into either Windows, which is named MT7010, or boot into the Q4OS, which is Q4OS. Took it a long time to reboot, didn't it? <laughs> 
like I said, this is actually on a hard drive, so it's not going to be blazing. I don't really care. Actually, we should see a grub screen. Failed to open Debian. It'll keep going. Welcome to grub. In other words, it's detected it's not the only operating system, so it did not automatically start Q4OS. Preparing for first boot. We're loading up Q4OS, first boot service. Start job, 22 seconds, no limit. Uh -oh. <laughs> Pause. Just needed me to move. That's definitely a Q4 OS mouse. Okay, so if I sign in right here, that that is going to be my Windows. But I'm going to click on Other, and now you'll see another user, and this is Q4 OS, and I'll give it my password. I think that's right. Press Enter and see. Must have been right. Okay, congratulations. Setup has finished, and I know you can't read that. It says, congratulations, setup has finished. No desktop profile has been applied yet. It's highly recommended to run desktop profiler tool and apply one of the available profiles as soon as possible. Now, that's the screen you'll get when you first install Q4OS you'll have a screen where you can select different desktop options. Starting from full desktop experience to minimal desktop experience. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop this part because you don't need, it's gonna boot in and then once I get there, I'm gonna install Voco screen or something after it just wants to update. <laughs> well, got the welcome screen. All right, so I'll be back in Q4OS. There we go, Plasma Desktop. So, this is Q4OS. I booted into it, I installed you just saw me install NeoFetch and a simple screen recorder and what what else? Uh, HTOP. Was the HTOP installed? Yeah. One gig. Now I'd like to show you something here. Let's see. Let's open up their Dolphin File Manager and show you that right here where it says Basic Partition. That is my Windows drive. That's the Windows that we just left, and now we're in Q4 OS. Uh, one way you can see that, let's see, go into Users, and MT, go to Documents, and for Windows, here is the Firefox installer, which I didn't install, Foco screen, and the Q4 OS Windows setup. So you know we're in the Windows machine at this point. So you can go in and take something and copy it in. Let's just, let's, I tell you what, let's do. Let's go, let's go right here and say text file, call it tester. Nope. Say okay. Open it up, see what opens it up. Probably K right, yep. Let's say hello world. And let's save it. Close it out. Now let's copy it. Go back to, let's see here. Yep, users, MT, documents, and let's paste it right there. Paste one file. Now when we boot back into Windows, we'll look and see if that's there, and I, I'll guarantee it is. So I'm going to shut all this down, and I'm going to reboot. Something happened in there. 
Yeah, okay. All right, so we're back on the Windows machine. Just left Q4OS. If we go to settings, system. By the way, I disconnected the Wi-Fi. <laughs> go to about. We'll see we're on the Windows, same machine. Everything's the same. And also, let's look for that folder we copied over into our document. Tester note. Let's open it up. Probably notepad. Should say something like, hello world. And there that is. And also, when I shut down Boco screen in Q4OS, I copied it over. So there it is right there. With sound. <laughs> All right. So now, though. So let's decide, let's say, okay, I'm, I'm through with this. I don't want to deal with Q4OS anymore. What we'll do is we'll go back, find that executable right here inside this folder. We'll double click this and tell it yes. We intentionally ran that. Now what should pop up is a screen saying, it's installed, but we need to uninstall it. The previous installation was detected. A previous installation was detected. It needs to be uninstalled before continuing. This is revision 344. I didn't point that out a while ago, but it is. So a lot of revisions. So let's uninstall it. And there we go. So now let's just get out of it. I'm going to reboot, and we'll be right back in the window. So I'm going to save this. Okay, so I've rebooted. We've just uninstalled Q4OS. I'm going to reboot. And at this point, it'll just boot straight into Windows. We won't have the Q4OS grub menu anymore. And there's our Windows. Way out of focus, but there's our Windows. And the rabbit hole. <laughs> it could be tying a bowline knot right there. So, so that's it. I'm going to cut this part off, and when I come back with Voco screen, we'll be in Windows. Okay, so we're back in our Windows machine now. And if we go, let's see. If I go to Computer Management, here's our desktop. Oh, I wanted to show you a while ago that even though Linux 64, it left that empty folder there. That would have been the folder. That's not what I wanted. I wanted disk management. Right there. <laughs> and there's our disk unharmed. Everything's working. So that proves that it works. That you can install it. Use it. When you get through with it, uninstall it, or just keep using it. Just make sure you allocate enough space for your operating system. You see, I did 64 gigs, but I didn't see an option where you could manually set. You had to actually select it from the drop-down menu, which is okay, I guess. Just keep in mind that when you're in Q4OS, you can access all your folders from that Windows partition or partition or drive. But the other, the reverse is not true. From Windows, you, it won't show you those files. You can't, can't copy anything from Windows to Q4OS, but the reverse is true. You can copy from, copy and cut from Windows from Q4OS. So that's going to do it. Y'all give this a try. I don't really normally advocate dual booting, especially on the same hard drive. But I've installed this about five times now, and I uninstalled it, and I just really haven't had any problems. I don't see anything messed up. Everything seems to work. So that's going to do it. Peace out, guys. Y'all take care, and be brave.